Hi, this is Frank Hefner with Technique Peak. Next, we're going to look at accessory motion testing for the glenohumeral joint. So, what I like to do is I'm going to bring the patient's arm out into some slight abduction and palpating coming off the acromion onto the head of the humerus. And what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to be going to an inferior direction. Right. Trying to assess that joint play. Next, in this position, now I kind of bring them into more horizontal adduction. And I'm going to assess in a posterior direction. Again, keep in mind that plane of the glenoid kind of coming out. I can't just go straight down or I would, I would butt up against the glenoid. Again, assessing for that accessory motion. See if there's any restriction in posterior glide. Next, I would look at anterior glide, and I would prefer to keep the patient in one position. So, I'm keep the patient in supine. Coming on posterior aspect of the humerus, and providing an anterior force through the humerus to assess that anterior glide. Now, if restrictions are found in any of those planes, we would then provide uh, treatment you know, with joint mobilization. What I like to do is try to think of you know, these restrictions in the capsule, and you know, we need to really mobilize and improve motion you know, throughout the entire range. So instead of just thinking of things in a straight planar fashion, we want to be able to mobilize the joint you know, and throughout its range of motion. Um, so if I wanted to work on, you know, we found some restrictions in that posterior glide, I would again want to get Rob set up in the proper position so I'm mobilizing out laterally more, providing that posterior force. And while doing this, and providing that posterior force, I can also bring Rob into more or less external rotation. So trying to work thing, work mobilizing that capsule in different range of motion. Same is true with that inferior glide we find that's restricted, I would mobilize and bring Rob's arm into different degrees of abduction. See where there might be more or less restriction. And also, your mobilizing force can also kind of be multi-planar, you know, so again, you don't always have to think of things as pure posterior, pure inferior, you know, the, you could also kind of work on mobilizing the capsule, you know, throughout two planes of motion. So I kind of, if I'm doing inferior, would be kind of straight that way, or posterior coming down, there's nothing wrong with mobilizing in the middle and assessing and seeing how does that impact their range of motion. And again, this is all coming through kind of like in a multi-planar fashion and I'm bringing Rob's arm into more external rotation as I do that. Again, the ultimate goal is improving, you know, typically overhead arm elevation. 
I'm trying to find where it is that joint most restricted. So that was assessment and treatment for the glenohumeral joint. This is Frank Kefner with Technique Peak.